destination for that baby. That's a zero. The real McCoy. The only thing that got really damaged was the pilot. He broke his neck. Square, huh? Think he could recognize her again? This is the Japanese Zero. Take a good look at her. Your recognition of the Zero may save your life. Your recognition of the Zero may destroy its life. Watch her closely. Study every characteristic to aid you in your recognition. Look at that nose. A perfect circle broken only by the oil cooler. Note the slight dihedral angle. Look at that low wing and middle tail. Notice the oil cooler and air scoop directly below the engine cowling. See how the fuselage tapers to a point in the rear. It's like a big cigar. Note the tapering edges of the wings, the rounded tips. See how straight the line is from engine to tail. And that tail, see how the leading edge of the vertical piece tapers more than the trailing edge. Look how it curves out to a point away from the nose. Think you can recognize her? Don't think. Be sure. Watch her. Watch her closely. Yes, we know that's no zero. That's a P-40. But did you know? They don't look alike to you now, do they? Look at the difference in the shape of those noses. The P-40, with its deep radiator, is oval. The Zero is a perfect circle, broken only by that oil cooler. Get those undercarriage fairings on the P-40. Compare the tail. The tail of the P-40 is high. The tail of the Zero is middle. Let's look at her from below. Look at the pointed nose of the P-40 and the blunt nose of the Zero. The leading edge of the wings of the P-40 has no taper. The wings of the Zero taper back. The tail of the P-40 is notched. The tail of the Zero tapers into the fuselage, which extends beyond it. Now, let's take them in profile. The engine of the P-40 is in line. The Zero is radial. Note the deep radiator on the P-40 as compared to the shallow oil cooler and air scoop on the Zero. Next, see how the cock canopy on the P-40 is much further back from the nose than on the Zero. What's more, the canopy on the P-40 fits into the fuselage while the canopy on the Zero sits on the fuselage. Now for the tails. The P-40s is rounded and curves in toward the nose. The Zero's is pointed and curves out away from the nose. No one could possibly mistake them for each other, could they? You think not? Well, let's see. Let's take the case of one pilot. His name was Jimmy Saunders. His story starts on the day when he was flying to a base somewhere in the Far East. Come in. Lieutenant Saunders reporting for duty, sir. Glad to have you with us, Lieutenant. Uh, glad to be here, Major. We can certainly use you. Sit down. Cigarette? Oh, thank you, sir. How was the flight over? Well, I made it, sir, with the help of a P-40. You like our P-40? Oh, yes, sir. It's a nice airplane. Good. Then maybe we can count on you not to shoot any of them down. Oh, 
I didn't have any plans along that line, sir. It's been done, you know. You mean jet pilots? I mean American pilots. Men with as much enthusiasm for the P-40 as you have, but with an unfortunate lack of ability to tell a friend from an enemy. Excuse me, sir, but how could anybody mistake a P-40 for a Zero? A great many things can happen in the excitement of preparing for combat. Too many pilots are too anxious to make sure of the kill. They start shooting before they've made certain what they're shooting at. It's a damn sight better to let a Zero get away than to knock down one of your own planes. Say nothing of one of your own men. We feel enough to spare around here. Well, sir, I had no idea. Well, we're not broadcasting the fact. I know, but... Now, don't misunderstand me, Lieutenant. It's not a common occurrence. Most of our men know their plane. Uh, identification becomes second nature to them. If there's still a doubt in their minds, they maneuver close enough to make sure. Uh, of course, there is such a thing as being too cautious. Take the case of the man who drew those silhouettes. Say, that's quite a job. He had plenty of time for it. Been flat on his back for two months. Shot down while he was still maneuvering around trying to decide if the other plane was a zero or not. He found out. If he'd known his identification, that zero might never have gotten him. Well, he learned his lesson. And to make certain that others would profit by it, he put it all down in those. All right, let's see if you can do your wafting on the zero. Yes, sir. With or without looking. You might as well make it easy on yourself now. It'll be a lot tougher upstairs. Yes, sir. Wings. Leading edge tapers, trailing edge tapers, tips rounded, slight dihedral angle. You might add to that that there are two 20 millimeter cannons mounted one in each wing. Probably Swiss Ehrlichen guns. Yes, sir. There's something I didn't know about, sir. Huh? Oh, yes. The wing tips can be folded so as to utilize more space in a carrier. Incidentally, the span is 39 feet 4 inches. All right, go on with the engine. Engine, radio, Mitsubishi version of our cyclone. That's right. There are twin row 14 cylinders. Now for the fuselage. Fuselage. Blunt nose with a spinner on it. Cockpit canopy sits on the fuselage. Retractable landing gear with bearing plates. Say, uh, there seems to be one gear missing, sir. The gears are operated hydraulically. As a result, the wheels retract alternately. I guess there are a couple of things I don't know about this airplane, sir. I'm glad to hear you admit it. That's the beginning of wisdom. The wings and the fuselage are in one piece, made of dual aluminum. Uh, there's another feature worth noting. The entire fuselage is flush riveted. With the result, there are very few protuberances to cause wind resistance. The length is 28 feet, 5 inches. There's a pair of machine guns <coughs> mounted in grooves above the cowling. They're 7.7 millimeter, and they're synchronized to fire through the propeller. I hope you don't ever get them on your tail. I'm with you there, sir. <laughs> All right, finish her up. Tail. Leading edge of flat surface tapers more than trailing edge, with the fuselage extending to a point beyond it. Leading edge of vertical piece tapers more than trailing edge. Tail is pointed, curves out away from the nose. I guess that's it, sir. Good enough. As you probably know, there are three types of zeros. One is a single float plane without rigging. All three have slightly varying characteristics, but this is the type you're most apt to tangle with, so get to know her. All of her. Yes, sir. I'll look for the balls de rouge on her wings and fuselage. Yeah, I wouldn't depend on that if I were you. The Japs have a neat trick of painting her all sorts of colors. Sometimes even like our P-40s. Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Well, sir, how soon do I get a chance to knock one up and down? Soon enough. But don't get any idea if the zero is a pushover. With 340 miles an hour top speed, a service ceiling of 35,500 feet and a normal range of 700 miles increased by a droppable extra fuel tank, there's not much she can't do. They built her light and maneuverable, threw away the armor protection for the pilot and the self-sealing gasoline tanks. She only weighs around 5,200 pounds, fully loaded, and has a horsepower of over 900. And when you see the speed with which she climbs, you'll appreciate what I'm saying. There's just no use trying to dogfight a zero. That's out. Your best bet is to hit fast. Either the wings or just behind the cockpit. But if you miss, don't hang around. He as bad as all that, sir. Seeing's believing. But if I were you, I'd take my word for it. Yes, sir. Now, here is our operation. When you're on your own, you'll do patrol from our base here to these outlying islands. finally came. Saunders was on his own, out chaff hunting. 
look sort of keyed up. Wouldn't you be? Don't expect too much, Lieutenant. Not on your first day. What's up? See something? It's a plane, all right. But what sort of a plane? Friend or enemy? P-40 or zero? Well, now's the time to remember your recognition. Now, as in a deep radiator, round tail curving in toward nose, inline engine, then it's a P-40. Or has that plane an oil cooler, an air scoop, pointed tail curving out, away from nose, radial engine? If it has, then it's a zero. Tough to tell from here. Maybe if you got closer. Start climbing, Saunders. by one of our planes. Do you by any chance know anything about this? Yes, sir. I'm afraid it was me. He's afraid. Well, Saunders, what have you got to say for yourself? Not much, sir. From a distance after it was a zero. Then I held my fire A little because... late on your identification, weren't you? Yes, sir. But I did... How run... far were you from the other plane when you opened fire? I'm not quite sure, sir. We'll soon find out. Have your film developed immediately. Yes, sir. Major, I want to... can wait, Lieutenant. Get after that film. Yes, sir. Corporal. Get the projector ready. Yes, sir. How could you start firing at that distance? Hold it. Didn't you look in your sight? I thought I did, sir. You don't seem to be very sure of yourself, Lieutenant. I'm sure of one thing, Major. After I... Look at that airplane. It's closer now, I realize. But even at the distance you started firing, you should have been able to identify it. Look at that deep radiator. The inline engine. That cockpit canopy fits into the fuselage. The tail is round and curves in toward the nose. All right, Corporal, take it away. There's more film, sir. I'm sorry, Lieutenant, but I have an appointment. You can stay and run it if you want to. Coming, Weldon. But if you don't mind, sir, I think I'll stay for a few more feet. I want to see how close I came to being wiped out. Carry on, Corporal. Now I know what a clay pigeon feels like. Hey, wait a minute. That's not me. It's a zero. What? Hold it. Well, Saunders, I think I'll forego that appointment. Let's hear about this. Well, sir, following my encounter with the lieutenant here, I was flying along wondering if I should slit my throat. I felt like a candidate for the Jap Air Force. Getting time to turn for home. Not that I was homesick. I had a hunch what was in store for me, but well, there was no use stalling. 
I was thinking, that other guy's probably back already. Telling the Major how he almost got knocked down by another P-40. I was thinking what you'd tell me when I got back. Suddenly I stopped thinking. I saw something. Another plane. I tried to make her out. She was too far away. I started to climb. right this time. Cigar-shaped fuselage tapering to point and rear. Check. Wings close to nose. Canopy sits on fuselage. Check. Tail pointed. Curving out. Blunt nose. Stubby spinner. Radial engine. Oil cooler. Air scoop at bottom of nose. It's a zero. Check. of God went on. <laughs> I see your point. I don't think, however, that you'll have anything to worry about in the future. At least not from Saunders. He seems to have learned his lesson by a method I'd hardly recommend putting into general practice, but nevertheless, he's learned it thoroughly. If every pilot would only realize the importance of identification and become letter perfect in the art of identification, there'd be fewer lives lost and fewer planes destroyed. Know your enemy, but also... Know your friend. Well, they know their friends, all right. And what's more, they know their enemy. Do you? Radial engine. Perfect circle, broken only by oil cooler. Low wing. Cockpit canopy sits on cigar-shaped fuselage. Plunk nose. Stubby spinner. Oil cooler and air scoop. Fuselage tapering to point and rear. Closeness of wings to nose. Radial engine. Canopy close to nose. Tail pointed and curving out away from nose. Remember, on your recognition of the zero, may depend your life. Know it so you can destroy it. This is the Japanese Zero. Zero. 